Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian, where today I'm going to be answering some questions you had for me about vintage style. I recently answered some sewing questions here on the channel, so I'll put a card up to that video as well. It came out rather long. No one is surprised with my propensity to ramble. And again, there are a lot of questions here today that I might answer, like can answer best by going ahead and just linking you to a video I have covering the topic in more detail. So I will be pointing down to the description quite a lot and linking you back to uh, older videos of mine where I answer a lot of these questions in a lot more depth. And I mentioned that just because the first question here on my list is from Mary and she asks, how can you take vintage styles, say 40s and 50s, and make it work in a modern work environment? I'm a teacher and I love 40s fashions. I can't afford to have both vintage style and modern work clothes, which makes complete sense. Um, but I actually do have an entire video all about wearing vintage to work and different sort of options and my kind of suggestions and opinions on that. But I think you can definitely, especially as a teacher, it depends on like what kind of teacher you are. Like obviously if you're a preschool teacher, your clothing has different demands than like a college professor or a high school teacher even. So it kind of depends on your exact environment too, like whether you work at like a primary school or like an elementary school or into a high school and things like that, because I think you can probably get away with more personal expression, like the older kids you work with, I suppose, um, just because, you know, younger kids, there's more messes and like finger painting and things like that, I assume, come into contact. So you don't want to wear like true vintage clothes if there's going to be finger painting, things like that. So I assume the, the age of children in this instance would matter quite a lot. But again, vintage clothes tend to be quite modest, which works well in a school environment, I imagine. And I, I mean, you could always do like, you know, cardigans, sweaters, skirts, uh, nice dresses. I, I don't see any conflict between these two things of uh, being a school teacher and wearing vintage. I think they work quite well together. Um, and if any of you are teachers who happen to wear vintage, leave your recommendations in the comments as well. Now, the next question is in all caps, and so I realize I must take it seriously, and it's right placement of brooch. And I do find this quite easy to answer because I, I don't think there is a correct or like right placement for your brooch. You can wear them on either side, in the center, up near the, you know, shoulder if you want to, down lower. Sometimes I wear multiple ones, so I like kind of scatter them around. You can wear them pinned to your hat, pinned onto a scarf, pinned onto a sash, in, uh, pinned into a turban, uh, pinned on like a ribbon around your wrist, pinned to your waistline. Uh, you can wear them like pinned to the center back of a v-neck or something like that is nice. You can you can wear them anywhere anywhere you want. There's no correct placement for a brooch. It's just where you feel looks best, honestly. What is one color I will not wear? And you may have noticed I don't uh, often wear pastels in general, but I definitely don't wear pink. And that's just because I feel like I don't look good in pink. It's not because I don't like pink. I like pink things like like I'd like a pink KitchenAid mixer or like a pink Cadillac or I don't know even like a pink handbag. I, I had a pink handbag for a while, but I never reached for it just because I. I don't wear pink, even though I do like it. Like, or a pink tile bathroom, I would like. No surprise there, but I don't. I just don't wear pink. It's not because I dislike it. It's just because I don't think it looks good on me and my like skin tone in particular. Now I have another collection of questions that I feel like uh, I can answer best with a playlist. So I'll be linking you to a new playlist I made of all my videos covering vintage essentials because I have a few questions like, what are your essentials to giving off a vintage vibe, style, how to do vintage in any season? Um, what do you consider the must have accessories? And I have a vintage all, uh, video all about my essential accessories. Um, someone asked for a uh, vintage capsule wardrobe starting point to dressing vintage and I have some like uh, videos just like my essentials of vintage and style in general uh, vintage summer essentials vintage fall and winter essentials so I have made videos on these things uh, before so I'm just going to put a playlist up to here that's just like my all my vintage essentials videos I suppose and Bronte Basics book club asked did you start with outerwear or main outfits how did it all come to be and I would say I think about outerwear the least just because when it's that cold outside I just tend to not leave the house that much um, well, obviously during panini times, but even during normal times, if it's really cold outside, I usually don't go anywhere. I'm very lucky that I work from home and so I don't have to. So that's just a, a privilege I have in working from home. So thank you for giving me a job here where I just sit and talk to a camera that's very useful for me when it comes to time for wearing outerwear because I just don't have to go out there. But I think I've talked about my vintage kind of style journey probably before here on the channel, maybe in some like really older videos or um, I have some like intro to vintage style videos or like how to start wearing vintage videos. Um, I think I have a playlist of those too. So I'll link that to that in the description. Um, but I started with like two pencil skirts were like probably the first like much more vintage leaning things I added into my wardrobe. For a long time, I wouldn't let myself wear vintage style or the style that I wanted to just because and like morning, um, this is, you know, not the coolest thing to say, but like I didn't think that I was like thin enough to be allowed to wear what I wanted. Like I, I kind of told myself, you can dress how you want 
once you get down to like a certain weight or something like that. So I was very, had a very toxic relationship with um, my self image for a long time in my early 20s. And so then when I finally like got over that, I suppose, um, and I started wearing what I wanted to, I added a black pencil skirt and a navy blue pencil skirt to my wardrobe. I actually made them. And I just started wearing those with like t-shirts. I think a t-shirt and a pencil skirt is a great outfit for when you're transitioning your vintage wardrobe. But I do think I talk about this, like how to transition into a vintage wardrobe and what to add more in some of my older videos. So again, check out that uh, playlist in the description. A question with a semi-related answer from Marley who asked um, uh, how I got into vintage and how and that it looks like I prefer in 40s and 50s styles and was wondering what about those decades attracts me. I would say most of all, like what first attracted me to those decades, well, I was just, I got into vintage in general because I liked costuming when I was a kid. Um, I liked historic costuming. And then I started getting into like high fashion when I was in high school and like reading Vogue and um, like looking at what high fashion was doing because it was very opulent at the time. Before the crash in 2008, high fashion was in a very like over the top kind of place and like fashion shows were very over the top. Um, so it seemed like very fantastical and fun. And so I started getting interested in high fashion then. And a lot of 1940s and 50s styles were on the runway at that time. Um, in like 2006 through 2009, I would say, there was a lot of 40s and 50s inspiration in runway fashion, especially because like Mad Men was on TV. So the 50s were kind of having a moment. And then when high fashion moved on, I just, I just didn't. So I stayed with vintage fashion and like got really interested in that. Um, but then for a long time, I wouldn't let myself wear it, like I said. Um, and then, so it was only after like I was getting through kind of my body image issues that I had that I let myself start wearing vintage um, or like vintage style. I don't wear a lot of vintage clothes. I make reproductions as you know. But what about 1940s and 50s in particular attracts me? I think part of it is that the like ideal silhouette of the time is more similar to like what my actual body shape is. You know, the ideal body shape goes through waves. Um, so my body does like naturally lend itself to like, I'm actually naturally kind of an hourglass. So which is something I detested about myself for a long time, but it works very well for 1940s and 50s fashions. So like, it's kind of a combination of like, I already, I liked most vintage, but I didn't feel like I looked, you know, my best in 19, like 20s or 30s fashion, for example. Um, but I did look, I, I looked, I felt good in 1940s, 50s fashions, and I am drawn to them for, I don't know, an unknown reason as well. Like I like them best of all out of any decade, and they happen to also fit my shape quite well, or like my shape fits the ideal shape of that time quite well. So it's just like a kind of perfect marry, marrying, and I'm kind of like just lucky in that sense, I suppose. And my favorite like period of fashion in general is like 45 through 55, I would say. Like late 1950s things get to be sometimes too like boxy or like almost like perfect and like uh, housewifey for me. And then uh, early 40s things sometimes are like the skirts are shorter and things are again kind of boxier and almost like frillier too. Like the frillier aspects, like lots of ruffles and lace and things like that are not really something I'm into. So I'm much more into like the, especially the suiting again from 45 through 55 and like the more sleek kind of designs, I suppose. I'm not really into ruffles personally. Some people like them, just not my jam. Lauren asks, what are your feelings on wearing versus preserving true vintage? Um, if something is already falling apart, if like veiling on a hat is already like crumbling or something, um, I, I don't tend to buy those kinds of things just because I'd rather not be the one that they, like it's like, you know, the like one of those games where you pass something around and, and someone's gonna be the one who's holding it while it buzzes or something like that. I feel like I don't wanna be the person who has the vintage item when it crumbles. Like I'd rather have things that are still have enough life left that I can be pass them on before they die in some ways um, because I like being able to use things without worrying about them crumbling on me. And I know a lot of vintage um, wearers and collectors talk about having a constant mending pile where all like this, this thread or the seam will split or something like that and you're always having to fix things because the clothing like the thread is weak and will fall apart on you and things like that and I don't have to I don't really experience that kind of thing just because the only vintage clothes that I have are suiting which are like usually more top of the line kind of things from the time um especially because I like to buy things that are not falling apart I guess I just have a certain standard of the things I buy and like that's just a privilege to be able to buy things that are in good condition because they do cost more. Um, I would rather save up for something that is in better condition personally, but that's just me. And especially at this point in my collecting, that's, I mean, I'm very, it's easy for me to say because I've been collecting for over like almost 10 years now. So I have a lot, I don't have a lot of holes in my collection so I can be picky now. Whereas like when you're just starting out, you might buy things that are um, 
in different kinds of states of condition just because that's the only vintage you can get a hold of, which makes sense to me. But once something starts to deteriorate, I think it's best to stop wearing it. Um, I hate stories where it's like, oh, I wore this 1920s dress and by the end of the night it was in shreds, but man, I had a great night. No, I don't like that kind of thing, obviously. Or like when people buy vintage and like destroy it for a Halloween costume, and put like fake blood all over it or whatever, um, or to be like a haunted bride or something like that and like wear old wedding gowns and stuff like that. I, I mean, obviously, as someone who loves vintage clothing um, and has worked in museums before, I would much rather those things be preserved or like put into a museum of some kind. Vintage is like a finite resource. There's not going to be any more. So I don't like to see it destroyed, of course. I would, if something is falling apart, I usually don't bring it into my collection and I wouldn't wear it, I guess, is the answer to this question. Someone has asked, is the new Scaparelli as good as the OG? And the answer is, no, it's not. I mean, there's some nice pieces. And like they bring in different designers like every few seasons, if not every season. But OG Scaparelli is real good. And the hat, they have hats, whereas nowadays they don't tend to make hats. So I'm always going to go with OG Scaparelli. We have someone who has not made their question in all caps, but it does end with a exclamation point, And that is um, shoes that aren't heels. And there are just so many. There, there are so many. First of all, like regular ballet flats are perfectly like 40s and 50s appropriate. No problem. Penny loafers. Uh, most kinds of loafers, actually, and uh, like lace-up Oxford flat shoes. Um, you got your saddle shoes, uh, like even like early like white um, Keds are perfectly vintage appropriate uh, for casual settings. But like mm, a lot of sandals actually also and like flat and small like wedge shoes too that aren't perfectly flat, but like aren't like a total heel either. Um, Esprigel sandals, perfectly vintage. I mean, there's a lot of flat shoes that are in all my like vintage catalogs and stuff like that. So I'll link in the description to a couple of pages on my Pinterest uh, from Montgomery Ward's catalogs from the 40s and 50s that show like all these flat shoes. So I get a lot of questions about like, what if I don't wear heels? And it's like, from my point of view, you really don't have to. Um, I just do because I don't mind pain, you know? And then we have another one where it's like several questions are similar, um, all asking about undergarments and like vintage shapewear. Um, what type of undergarments we need to create the shape see in the 40s and 50s, what's a good cone bullet bra. Um, and I have a video all about like the vintage undergarments that I wear and talking a little bit about what was worn at the time, mostly just talking about like what my substitutes are for those. But I, like sometimes people ask me like what like shapewear are you wearing or like what corsets are you wearing? And like, I'm not, I'm not wearing like a lot of like, I don't, I don't wear a girdle ever. Um, I'll wear Spanx or like smoothie, like short things. Um, to avoid that that thigh rubbing together situation, the chub rub as it is called, um, but I I don't wear like lots of boning or anything like that to achieve the silhouette that I have. Again, I'm just super super lucky that I'm actually quite hourglass shaped. I'm just like a large large-ish hourglass um, compared to by modern standards, I suppose, um, and by vintage standards, I'm definitely like a size large. But I don't do a lot of shapewear. I, I guess I don't wear a lot of shapewear. I just wear the Bali flower bra, which I've mentioned before, and I've talked about in that video. And then like Spanx, usually that's all I, I do. Um, I haven't done a lot of research into vintage lingerie just because I haven't felt the need to for myself. It's something I find less interesting um, just because it's all hidden anyway to me. Um, I, I, it all gets covered up. It's important to create the correct silhouette uh, for any time period that you want to wear. But I'm not a purist. I'm not super into accuracy anyhow. So uh, I don't really think too hard about vintage style undergarments, but I do have a video about it. So if you want to check that out, you can hear more of my opinions on the subject. I have a question about how to mix goth with vintage, but with class. And I think this is a very easy combination. First of all, you can just wear vintage styles and silhouettes in mostly black and use like a spider or a spiderweb brooch, which I'm a huge fan of that look. But in general, I have like a, a Haunted Mansion sort of themed lookbook where I did lots of sort of vintage gothy looks. So I'll put a card up to that. I also have my like um, like Slytherin lookbook here on the channel. It's kind of full of like vintage gothic-ish looks. Um, but I think this is very easily done. I mean, you just kind of pick a more gothic color palette and like stick to that and then go for like whatever uh, decade of vintage silhouette and styles that you prefer. You could do like 1930s goth very easily, especially with like um, 1920s and 30s. There was a lot of like dark, um, like silent screen star kind of makeup going on. So you could definitely look into that kind of thing. Um, but there's a lot of ways to incorporate goth and vintage style together, I think. Um, I'm a big fan of like a black sweater with a black pencil skirt. You know, I, I love wearing all black, so 
I think it's very easy to combine these things actually. So I've done a little bit, a few outfits in this vein before myself. I feel like I get the opposite of this question a lot about how to stay warm in the winter, which I'm just not that equipped to answer just because I live in a place that snows and gets cold, but doesn't get freezing, freezing cold. Um, so I feel like I never know how to answer the, like, what do I do if it's like sub-zero? I'm like, I don't know, I don't go outside if it's like that. But this person asks how to stay cool wearing vintage in the summer. And I think of wearing a lightweight cotton dress in the summertime is about, you know, the least amount of clothes you can wear. If you're just wearing like a light cotton dress, it's pretty breathable and you can throw that in the wash later if you sweat in it. I think it's very easy to wear vintage style in the summer. Um, I guess if you're wearing true vintage, as it's called, which drives me nuts, but a topic for another time, um, you might not want to like damage it by like sweating in it a lot or um, washing it all the time like that. So I think that's where Repro can really come in handy um, again, because you can just throw it in the wash like that, which is nice any season, especially in the summer though. But also like they have uh, vintage style, they had shorts in the 40s and 50s. Um, so you can wear shorts. Also like beach pajamas or like big floaty pants that are kind of like casual are nice in the summertime, I think. And like halter tops and like crop tops even were totally vintage appropriate. So you just gotta look at vintage summer style, I suppose. Um, like images mean, from the time, I guess, because it'll give you inspiration for summery outfits. But I, I don't think there's any trouble wearing vintage in the summer. I would say it's much harder uh, layering and wintering wintering up. Uh, a lot of times in vintage catalogs and things like that for winter, I see a lot of like people will still wear like a say a, maybe a wool dress, but like even a rayon dress underneath a like fur coat and then their legs will still be bare. They're wearing stockings, but that's it. Um, other, than, other than that, they're like from the knee to the ankle is just bare to the elements. But that's just because <laughs> like when we're talking about like high style of the 1940s and 50s, like a wealthy wealthier woman especially for example would not be out in the cold like that it's not like she's going to work or you know lumber jilling um so when it comes to like being outside all the time people who had to be outside all the time they would wear hardy denim trousers and like overalls and or like coveralls and um layers of wool and lawn johns and all that kind of stuff but when it comes to like high fashion there's not a lot of good stuff for extreme weather because you know like ladies with their like gloves on and hats and things like that. They just weren't out in extreme weather very often. Um, it was a different time, you know? What vintage styles do you really dislike? And I mean, just like, uh, I prefer some decades over other decades, I suppose. Like, I don't really like 1970s fashion, I guess. I'm not super interested in that. Like, I would say that's my least favorite decade, I guess, of like the 20th century. Um, but there are some 70s styles that I like also. So it's like, I can't like paint everything with one brush. And then, um, but like uh, in general, like vintage styles that I really dislike from the eras that I do like, like from the 40s and 50s things I dislike. I don't like the boxy suits from the late 50s into the 60s. I don't think they do favors for anybody. And I just don't, don't really understand them. Um, and then uh, I also just don't really, like I said, I don't really like ruffles and frills upon frills upon frills. Um, I really don't like, I guess personally, I'm not really into girlish kind of fashions. I like sophisticated woman fashion and that I mean like you know someone who looks I guess like they're over 25 <laughs> like I, I it's interesting because fashion before the 19 like late 1950s um you know there was like a kind of more of a distinction between juniors fashion and then like women's fashion and women's fashion and being a, like a mature woman was still like valued more than it is now whereas now it's like all about uh, it has become all about like youth culture and like looking very young um, and like kind of like looking maybe like 19 forever. Whereas back then there was like a certain like value and like uh, I guess certain prestige to like dressing like a woman um, instead of a girl like and not, not wearing your hair in pigtails but like wearing your hair shorter and curled and set. Um, and like a lot of this goes along with gender rules as well but it's just a completely different. It gets hard to even explain without like, having to done a dissertation on it this difference in like how we viewed like the ideal look for women or like female presenting people almost um, because now it's a much more youthful ideal whereas then it was much more of like a like 20s into the 30s as an ideal um, and I prefer more sophisticated or like sleek fashions as opposed to girlish or like frilly or like eyelet and I don't know things that seem younger to me I don't really like younger-ish fashions or like things that look like make you look like a doll kind of. A question related to some of the stuff I was talking about earlier perhaps is have you ever had a style or like identity crisis 
with vintage. Or I, I assume they're asking like if I've ever like wanted to stop wearing vintage or like hesitated or like wanted to switch up my wardrobe entirely or something like that. Um, and no, ever since I started wearing vintage like inspired clothes or like sewing vintage inspired things and wearing vintage inspired style in general, I've always only wanted more more of it or gotten more ridiculous. I think when I first started wearing vintage, I was like still a little bit afraid of like gloves and like wearing hats uh, took me a while to like get interested, but I've only ever gotten like more off the deep end with these things. Like now I don't just like brooches. I like giant brooches and <laughs> like I don't just like hats. I like quite wild feathery hats um, and I have collected gloves in every color now. So uh, I think if anything, I've only just gone deeper off the end into vintage. Um, I don't really... I've had someone ask me before, like, do you ever think you'll stop wearing vintage? Or, like, what do you think you'll be wearing in 20 years? And I'm like, I have no idea. But, like, I don't see myself stopping wearing vintage-inspired style. The things that I make for my wardrobe now, I intend to... Like, there's some things that I've been in my wardrobe for almost 10 years now since I started wearing vintage style. And I intend to keep them for another 10, 20 years. I, I try and make things nicely so that I can keep them in my wardrobe for a really long time. And I intend to keep wearing them. And I don't intend to have children, so hopefully my body won't change shape that much. How to do something cohesive if you like several styles. And I think this is interesting because I also like several styles. For example, like I like pink, but I don't wear it because I just don't feel like it looks good on me. Like I would buy something pink and then it would sit in my wardrobe and I don't actually reach for it. So like just because you like different styles doesn't mean they are all good for you to wear. And I don't mean that like in like an objectively people will look at you and they don't think you look good in it. I mean like you're not going to reach for it in your closet. So it's important between like you can like a lot of different styles but that doesn't mean that those are the styles for you and your wardrobe I suppose like notice what you choose to wear most and see like the theme like the biggest theme from that almost and if you do wear like something completely different every day then I don't see why you have to be cohesive honestly like that's I guess there's two many aspects to this question um one is like just because you like lots of different styles doesn't mean you wear them like I like a lot of Edwardian stuff but I don't dress in a history bound ish kind of way or like wear a lot of Edwardian influenced stuff at all. Um, but I, I like it. I like admire it on other people. It just doesn't suit me, my own personal style and like my life best. So that's just not what I wear, but I can still like it. There's nothing that takes, doesn't mean like I don't like it. If, if you want to wear, you know, bright 1930s beachwear one day and like gothy 1940s, you know, noir suiting the next day, I don't see why not. Um, I think you can mix and match and bounce around if you want to. You don't have to be cohesive. Um, if it's something that is concerning you, um, I would do my Pinterest trick, which is where you just pin everything you like onto a Pinterest board and then you go start looking through that one board and trying to find the major themes. Um, as I always say, I did this for my friend when she was trying to design her living room. Um, I pinned tons of different living rooms of all different styles and she chose her favorites, put them onto one board and then we noticed like in nearly all pictures, there was like the same coffee table. So we're like, well, babe, clearly you want this coffee table. Same kind of thing with style, like pin a lot of stuff that you like from all different boards and all over the place into one board and then scroll th through and see the commonalities like, oh, it's a lot of brown. OK, so like that's going to be your color palette. That's another thing, too, is like even if you're mixing lots of different styles, if you have like a defined color palette, that can be a good way to make things look cohesive or vice versa. If you like lots of different colors, but you keep everything within the same similar silhouettes and time period, then you can keep it cohesive via decade. So there's lots of different options when it comes to this kind of thing. But I also don't think it's mandatory to be cohesive because like people are not necessarily cohesive either. Like, you know, some days you are inter more interested in something than some other days. You, we all go through phases anyhow. So I think it's kind of nice to have different options for when you're leaning in one more in one direction than another. If it's something that you're concerned about, then go ahead and work on refining down to like a more narrow set of rules for yourself. But I don't tend to believe in rules in general, as we know. Um, I have a couple of questions about like the strict gendering of vintage fashion. Um, I find it uncomfortable as an NB. Are there any tips on blurring the boundaries? Um, or someone asked what, uh, what vintage style options are there if you don't wear skirts, for example? Um, and then someone else asked, how would you go about styling something in a vintage but androgynous way? Uh, I often find that vintage styles are very gendered and that women's clothing can be too femme for my con uh, comfort, but I'm also against the assumption that men's clothing is somehow unisex or gender neutral. I mean, what is the truly gender neutral, like, uniform? Because, and like, all clothes are gender neutral. It's the society that has gendered them. And like, we flip-flopped on some of these things. So like, for example, in the turn of the century, pink was considered like a masculine color for 
uh, children. Um, so like it was like a strong because like red is a strong color. So they would often dress like young boys in pink and girls in blue because like blue is softer and like society completely flip flopped on that. So like who decides what clothing is masculine or feminine and what colors are masculine and feminine? It's just completely like up in the air and doesn't mean anything anyway. Like we're all just like it's, it's just whatever society thinks at the current time happens to be more or less feminine or masculine, which hopefully we're making progress in these all these areas. But like it's not a skirt's fault that like because men aren't really allowed to wear skirts in like Western fashion that therefore they are considered extremely feminine. Like a skirt it's just a piece of fabric that covers both legs, you know? It's not it doesn't have a gender. And the same way that pants like I I don't like the idea that pants are considered masculine. Like at this point, women have been wearing trousers for a long time, you know? Um but when it comes to like dressing vintage in an androgynous way, like I'm not the best resource, let's be honest, because I am kind of a high femme person. Um but like I love the high waisted trousered Catherine Hepburn kind of look. It is considered more of an androgynous look because of that's what it was considered at the time. Now, of course, like you look at this and like this is something that this kind of look is something that was adopted a ton in the 1980s, for example. So I don't think anyone looks at this and thinks like, oh, they're trying to dress mannish anymore um, just because we've come a long way. But like at the time, Catherine Hepburn and like Marlene Dietrich before her even, or at the same time, but slightly before, like they were considered to be breaking gender norms by wearing trousers like this. And um, this is like a time where, again, women weren't allowed or young girls weren't allowed to wear jeans or like pants to school. Um, they had to wear skirts because like gender norms were very strictly enforced. Um, so they were breaking rules, but like wearing that same outfit now, you're not really breaking any rules. <sighs> I don't know. This is a hard question because I'm just not the best person to answer it because I am so high femme. And I don't think about, I mean, because I'm ace, I never think like, I don't choose anything I wear to appeal to men ever. Um, I only choose things to wear to appeal to myself. And I guess that's the advice is like, choose things to wear that appeal to you. And how other people perceive you is of more concern to people with these kind of concerns, I guess, than it is to me. So I, I have a privilege in identifying with my assigned gender. So I don't, none of these things ever make me feel uncomfy. Um, or like being perceived, I never am perceived incorrectly, I suppose. So I don't know what that's like. And I can't really understand. Um, so it's hard for me to answer this question fully just because I wish I could do a better job of doing so. Um, I don't have all of the context knowing what that's like to be perceived incorrectly. Um, but I could see how that would be frustrating. I just can't fully, um, like I can't empathize all the way. I, I, I want, I would like to help if I could, but I just don't know that I'm the best person to do so. I quite like masculine women's wear from the 1940s and 50s. Like I like the lumber jill aesthetic. I would say just because that the like high waist trousers and like more mannish looks of the 1940s and 50s were considered like slightly taboo and like were considered boyish at that time doesn't mean that they necessarily need to be now. But yeah, if you don't like wearing skirts or find a lot of vintage fashion too high femme, um, definitely look into like even earlier 1940s fashion has a lot or wartime fashion has a lot of trousers has a lot of like jumpsuits or siren suits even um overalls uh jeans like canvas trousers uh, wool trousers and like suiting with pants also there's a lot of bifurcated options you don't have to wear skirts or dresses to dress in a vintage way and as far as vintage menswear in particular inspiration i always recommend looking to dandy wellington because he just has an eye for style that's above and beyond like the way he pairs colors and textures is so um, striking and he does such a good job of that and also he does a lot of educational kind of content on talking about how to wear menswear and pair menswear and collect vintage menswear and stuff like that. I think I just am not well versed enough in this topic in the topic of like androgyny in general just because I it's not something I have interacted or interfaced with a ton myself. I also had um, some other questions about how does one wear vintage style without ending up looking very formal by today's standards or how would you style something more casual or dressed down for vintage? Um, what is the t-shirt and comfy sweats of vintage style? And then how to dress vintage if you're lazy AF? And I feel like that is a similarly related question. Um, and no matter what, if you wear nice clothes now, whether it's a dress or it's like nice trousers and a blouse, if you wear nice clothes, you're gonna look more formal than everybody else. It's just, it's just because ev because the bar is so low on formality of clothing right now that if you wore a modern dress, 
it's still people think you're dressed up. Like if you were to go to like H and M and buy a dress and wear that, people will be like, "Oh, do you have a date tonight? Do you have a party tonight? Are you going to an audition?" Like people think like any amount of formality must mean that something's happening because you're not wearing leggings, and like. It's nice that there's the freedom to dress lazy AF and be super casual and wear sweatpants if you want to, especially during the panini when it's like, the world's ending. Like, just let me wear sweatpants. Um, but like, uh, there is no remedy for people, again, perceiving you as being dressed more formally. And like, I think this is more of a confidence issue. Like you're going to be dressed more formally than most people because most people don't wear non-stretch fabric. So, like, if you're wearing, like, a woven fabric anything, shirt, pants, dress of any kind that, like, has a zipper even, like, it's just more formal than what 90% of people wear today, and there will be eventually comments about it. Like, I just, I've gotten comments before, you know, like, definitely, like, oh, you're going somewhere special, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, nah, just at Target, you know, just needed some soda or something, just salad. So I don't think there is a way to wear vintage without ending up looking formal um, to answer this question. I'm not sure that there is a way. Uh, like even in, like in vintage times, if you wore the clothing available in 1940 in a like sloppy kind of way, it would be very like frowned upon. So like, uh, but like you can kind of get away with wearing 1940s things in a more loungy kind of way now. Um, and you would still look more formal than other people. So I feel like there's no answer to this question other than becoming comfortable with the fact that you're going to be the best pressed person there. If, it, if you're bothered by any attention at all, it is going to be an issue with... Like, I, I guess I just don't think about... Other people don't matter much to me. Like, on the grand scheme, like, I, I'm kind of... Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of humans. But, like, I don't think about the people around me's opinions of me much, I guess. So, like... I'm just doing my thing, and if they happen to n like or not like how I'm dressed, it doesn't really affect me, you know? But again, looking at vintage resources, and especially old candid photos, or even old family photos within your own family, um, or just on Pinterest, you can see uh, more like dressed down looks, um, or even in like the catalogs that I post here, you can see what they call like casuals, or like play suits, or house dresses. These are all what the vintage time period considered to be more casual wear. So there are casual 1950s clothes by 1950 standards, by 40 standards, there are more casual clothes. But to us, they still look cool, white formal. <laughs> but like how to dress vintage if you're lazy AF. I mean, you have to put something on your body if you're going to leave the house. Again, this is not necessarily my area of expertise. When I'm home, you you all see me here. When I'm in the sewing room, I'm usually wearing an oversized Star Wars t-shirt and like flannel pajama bottoms because when I'm home and <laughs> lounging around, I dress the most comfortably for getting all the things I need to get done done. Um, I don't dress glamorously 100% of the time and I don't think that that makes me like not a true vintage lover because I don't wear like vintage around the house or like if I need to like, if we're like making in the middle of dinner and I realize we don't have unsalted butter, I'm not gonna get full of vintage, fully vintageified and like put on a petticoat and a dress to go to the store and get unsalted butter to finish dinner. Like I'll run out in like jeans and a t-shirt real fast. I don't mind. I hate the idea that like, if you have any modern clothes, you aren't a real vintage lover. If you wear sweatpants and a t-shirt to go like pick up a prescription that you're not a real vintage lover, kill that idea with fire, please, you know? But the thing about getting dressed when you're lazy, it's just having the things nearby. So that, like, that's the thing you grab. So like, if you have high-waisted trousers, if you have like a skirt sitting there instead of sweatpants, so it's like access, you know? Like if you're just grabbing the next outfit next to you before you like crawl out the door, just make sure that you have those things. A lot of times too, it's like planning an outfit the night before, which is what I used to do. I mean, so like in high school, I wore crazy fashion and then afterwards I wore vintage. But in the middle, I had this period where uh, I had this problem with self-esteem, but like in high school, I would always wear like kind of wild outfits and I would plan them the night before. So I would have everything just hanging there. So like when I got up at oh dark 30 to go to high school, because I had to wake up at like 5.50 AM or something to go to high school, I would have all my outfits just there. So I didn't like, you know, have to pick anything out when I wasn't even awake yet. Back then when I didn't drink coffee, those were the days. Um, so like having everything ready or like having go-to outfits that you like know, match and coordinate so you don't have to think about it, I guess, is also useful when it comes to getting dressed when you're feeling lazy. And then lastly for today, just because my voice hurts a little bit now, so I must have rambled on quite enough for me to have to edit through, unfortunately for me, um, is if I had to choose one item from my wardrobe that represents me, uh, which and why, 
And I would have to say probably a black 1940s suit. I have, well, I have one, one or two now. <laughs> um, and I would probably choose that just because I love suiting most of all. Um, and I love wearing black most of all. And I feel like it's a good backdrop for anything. You can like pair it with all kinds of kinds of different accessories. Um, but that is unfortunate because it seems silly to pick something that isn't something I made. Um, and like suiting is the one thing in my wardrobe that I don't sew myself. So it's kind of an odd choice because most of my wardrobe is made by me. But if I had to choose one item and I chose something that wasn't made by me, it would be misrepresenting myself a little bit. But that's what I feel most powerful in, I suppose, is um, 1940s suiting for sure. But yes, um, that was a few of your questions. I'm sorry I can't answer all of them, but as I learned from the sewing video, if I try to answer a bunch of them, this video goes, the video will go very long, um, which some people don't mind and some people do. And the robot on YouTube definitely does. But thank you for submitting your questions. I hope I got to a few of them today or that my other videos that I've linked in playlists and in the description and stuff like that will be useful to those of you who wanted me to go on uh, like in more detail about a certain topic or question. So hopefully I will have answered your question uh, further in the past. Past me may have done more work on your question than present me can do now. And thank you as always for watching today. I'll be back here with more pattern drafting and sewing and vintage fashion real soon. Bye.